We don't know for sure, but may have a liquid center, but there's really no land. This planetarium show looks as professional as any you'd see at a college campus or science museum. But these aren't college students. They're high schoolers who know just how lucky they are to have a permanent planetarium on their campus. Oh, it's amazing. It's so immersive and it feels like you're there. And with the, the surround sound, it makes it even better. Below the surface, they mix with cold, deep currents that swirl around undersea ledges and mountains. It's really cool to watch it because it's not 3D, but you can't tell that there's a screen, so it really, really looks like space. This is the Spark Center at Piner High School in Santa Rosa. At its centerpiece is a 100-seat planetarium used for classes, field trips, and monthly planetarium shows open to the public. Kids are super visual, and the planetarium is nothing more than a place where kids can visualize things, visualize data, visualize information, and they're very attuned to that, and I pander to that constantly. So how many images do you think that you took for that project? Total. Uh, hundreds. Yeah, hundreds. Yeah, hundreds. hundreds. I don't over, have a grand total. Over yeah. right Science now. teacher Kirk Kruger was pivotal in bringing this $3.8 million center to the high school. It was built from the ground up and opened its doors in 2014. In addition to the planetarium, there's a research-grade telescope in an observatory, a seismograph reading movements up to 22 feet below ground, a wind turbine, solar panels, and state-of-the-art classroom. The uniqueness of the Spark Center on High School Canvas is uh, pretty much through the roof. <laughs> it's about as unique as you can get. For one total package, all together in one place with the um, quality and kind of the most high-tech equipment, I think Punner High School is kind of head and shoulders above most places in the state. So there's the backside of the moon that you have never seen before. The facilities we have here feel almost college level. It feels so high level with our observatory and the planetarium. Everything feels so, so advanced. Matthew enrolled at Piner High School after seeing the Spark Center as a middle schooler. He's among a group of science students using the telescope for an advanced research project. I have been working on collecting data for a cataclysmic variable star, which is a binary star system. You have a white dwarf and then you have a regular star and the white dwarf's gravity is so strong, it's actually ripping the gas from the other star. Students are excited and when they get to do actual work with the facility, take actual data, like let's say working with the observatory, then it becomes even more exciting. It's not like the same thing as like, whoa, look at the planetarium dome, but when they sit there and they really look at working with real scientific raw data, learning things about, in this case, the universe, it kind of enhances that level of kind of really deep appreciation. Students get a chance to apply that scientific data to a real-world rocket program. It's a joint effort of Piner High School, Sonoma State University, and NASA. Basically, it is having kids use uh, professional rocketry to design, engineer, build, uh, put on the rockets, electronic equipment. It's, it's STEM in a nutshell. It's giving kids all sorts of different experiences. I, I told you it was a fast burn. The Spark Center isn't just for science students. It's open to any teacher on campus who wants to hold a class there. You might find a Greek mythology lesson one day, a physics lecture the next. And the public regularly stops by to hear guest speakers and watch evening planetarium shows. An important part of this whole project was to create a culture at our school. And not only that, but to create a culture with our community. It's working. Enrollment at the school is up by 30% since the Sparks Center opened. Several students say the center has opened their eyes to possible career paths and demonstrated that anyone can succeed in STEM fields. It's a male-dominated space. Um, it's really important to get more women involved in science and in the STEM field and to break that stereotype and to break that barrier between genders is very important to get young girls involved and to let them know that they can and they will, you know, succeed as well as men. Educators believe the Spark Center is much more than a building. 
It's a place where imagination and scientific exploration come together to inspire young minds. Kids were coming to us and it's like the curiosity had been beaten out of them. And science is a bad word, you know, it's hard and math is hard and I can't do this. And uh, so we're trying to reach our kids that come to Piner to get them to see that it's not scary and it's not hard and anybody can do it. I think the Spark Center does a wonderful job kind of, for me, symbolizing what I think all learning should be. And the focus should be on experiential, hands-on application of knowledge. As a student and as you're learning, book work is not the best. Being in this type of environment where you get the telescope, you get the planetarium, you get to be immersed in all of this uh, knowledge and resources. It just makes learning so much easier and so much more fun. How do you spark a love of science in a child? For Albert Einstein, it was a compass his father gave him when he was bedridden with an illness at age five. Einstein spent hours twisting the compass, marveling at how the needle always pointed north. Take a look around your house to see what items you might have to inspire the next generation of scientists.